Hey, everybody, we're here for a new episode of Five for Talking. The semifinals of the playoffs are over. We are going to be talking about the NHL finals. And I guess a recap, just some thoughts. Maybe we'll talk some Leafs later. I'm here with Caps, the captain of the show. And uh, we'll just jump right into it. So we almost nailed it. Criticisms aside about how we did it. Um, I think for the last two rounds of us guessing, like not playoff rounds, the last two tier lists we did of guessing, we almost had the exact same thing. That was Rangers, Florida, Dallas, Colorado. Mm-hmm. And it ended up being very close to being Dallas versus Florida. But Edmonton came through tonight. Uh, we're filming this Sunday night. Uh, yeah, I dang, think Edmonton. I'm shocked, right? Please tell me you're shocked. Um, I'm shocked. I'm very shocked. Um, uh, I mean, let's be frank here. I mean, um, I don't know, Frank. Edmonton had a pretty easy, um, up until facing Dallas and Dallas had, you know, the harder competition. So I thought that Dallas was a no brainer, but Edmonton, I didn't. It was the um, not not tonight's game, but the second last game where I saw highlights. And it's like, wow, these guys are they're they're pretty impressive. They're, they're impressing me right now. Um, so it, you know, um, it's safe to say at this point that I think Florida is going to take it, but you just never know what's going to happen because it's uh, you know it's Edmonton here. Is it safe to say? Well, let's. Talk, I'll finish talking about this series first. Yeah. Um, when you looked at it on paper, because one of my buddies is from Dallas, so we talk about it all the time. He has a tendency to homer, and and like have zero look into anything except for what he knows about Dallas teams. Uh, shout out to Duff. Um, however, it's. If for me, I feel like if you put that, if you looked at these two teams on paper, Dallas's team is like leaps and bounds ahead of them on terms of just a piece of paper, what they've done this season, the the roster that they have, that kind of stuff. But I think they have zero people on that roster, even remotely in a caliber with Connor McDavid and Leon Dreisaitl. And I think that makes a big difference. Connor McDavid has done so much in the last two rounds without even like scoring goals yeah i mean you make a fair point but it's like that's just two players you know what i mean it's like i know i agree but it's like you you've made the point of of like dallas's leaps and bounds mm -hmm. as a complete um, depth like they got the better goalie they got Way the better, better defense. They have the best defense probably other than Florida that was left of the four teams. And they got the better depth, like you said. So mm. it's like, I, which this this is why it's kind of like shocking. Um, but when you look at Edmonton, uh, Skinner's been playing better. Better. I don't think he's been outplaying Ottinger. I think Ottinger is the better of the two. But he's done enough to win you games. Um Bouchard has stepped up a lot. Uh, Ryan Nugent Hopkins is probably been one of their better player, their best players. Um, so, you know, you can pick out some of these players that have really stepped up, but it, it's like, like I said before, it's, it's shocking um, because when you look at it on paper, man, like Dallas should have ripped them apart, but. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. I, I mean, it, but they played well. It, it M- Minnesota, Dal- Dallas. I can't even speak English. Edmonton had played very well. They have. Um, it's out out of their level, at least in my eyes. Their defense coming into this, I would not have pegged as to be solid as they've showed they can be. Their forwards have played well defensively. They're winning face-offs. They're playing well in the penalty kill and penalty power play. And Skinner, you know, for what it's worth and all the shit I've talked, he played very well in this series. However, I don't know if he's going to be able to continue doing that. 
Florida was a, is a beast, and we'll talk about that. We'll segue from that to that, from that to that. It, it is so crazy because, like, I agree with you. Like, Florida is a beast, but I, I was like, Dallas should be a beast too. But <laughs> you know the kind I mean? of this is but the thing. The, what I the differences I've seen. Okay, and and like we I, we talked about it. Uh, my brother's like obsessed was obsessed with the Dallas versus Edmonton series. Um, he's actually my bro- my brother who doesn't even really watch hockey watched every single game of every Edmonton series so far. He's never, he has not missed one Edmonton game so far. Don't ask me why. Uh, same thing with Dallas. He's watched all the Dallas games, no, zero Eastern conference game, except the Leafs. Uh, Is it safe to say he's an Edmonton game, uh, fan now? I don't know at this point, to be honest with you, I don't, uh, he might just be a McDavid fan, but like, the Panthers versus the Rangers series was phenomenal. Phenomenal. Yeah. Like the way that the Rangers played was a little bit less than what we expected, but uh, they were a little bit sloppy against Carolina. However, Florida has been an absolute monster. Like from day one, they've just smashed everybody that was put in front of them. And it's a different game style. You're watching Dallas for Edmonton. It's quick paced. It's really like skillful. You know, most of the defense is like stick plays. Obviously, there's hitting, but you're watching Florida. They're skating a uh, hundred feet across the ice, punching someone in the face, taking the puck, skating down, and scoring. And it's it's a it's an old school type of hockey that we haven't seen really that much. Like, it's not a type of hockey you watch too much anymore. So, what does Edmonton need to do to? Bring it to Florida. They need to anticipate violence. So they and, need to and physicality. Adapt. Like I, I can almost promise that in the first game, Florida's gonna come out extremely physical to set the tone of the series. Extremely, yeah, even willing to lose the game to, to and taking penalties to prove that we will F you up. Cause like they're 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 a little bit dirty. But they're physical, they're strong, they're a lot of power forwards. Most of their team is capable on both ends. They are good at scoring goals. Their defensive depth is very strong. They have a good, a really good starting goalie and a backup goalie that's equally as good as either goalie on Edmonton. If uh, if Edmonton wins, does this solidify Connor McDavid into the GOAT? conversation yeah i i think eventually in like if you gave him five more years let's say and he didn't win a cup i i still think he would have been in that conversation because his accumulative stats would have got him there but i think winning a cup puts you over right it's it's an argument we've had a lot lately and like I, soccer fans out there feel free um where we're we keep arguing with people about messi and ronaldo and like go the back and forth and like if ronaldo's so good and you look at all the greatest players of all time have World Cups, but Ronaldo doesn't. Is he? Does he still belong there? His stats speak for themselves. But I mean, like, there's always going to be people that are going to make the argument. Like, if LeBron never won any championships, no people are going to make that argument. Like, how is he as good as Michael Jordan and never won any championships, right? Um, I know for a fact that McDavid will win eventually, whether it be this year or later. I, I will be surprised if Edmonton does beat Florida. I would really, really, really love to see Florida win a cup. Uh, the last five years, it's been Tampa Bay, Tampa Bay, Tampa Bay, Florida, Florida in the finals from the East. So I guess Florida's a hockey town now. But I don't know I if you have thoughts on that. <laughs> but, but I would love to see McDavid specifically win. Not so much Edmonton. Like it's, I don't feel like I care if Edmonton wins, but I kind of want McDavid to win. Does uh, regardless of of whether McDavid wins, actually, I'll ask you a question. Um, if he does win, does he stay? If does if he doesn't win, does he stay? He stays regardless. Okay. I think he stays regardless. I think if anyone leaves, it's going to be Dry Side off. Um. Uh, McDavid, I could see eventually leaving maybe after this contract when he's in his like mid 30s, like when he's like 32, 
he'll go to Toronto or whatever his favorite team is. The next contract. Okay. Yeah, the next contract. Because I think he's – how old is he now? 28? Uh, That's a good question. Um... I'll check it. I'll check it. But I feel like he'll take – he'll take a contract. Um, He's 27. So he'll probably take like a five-year contract, max money, and then – in his mid thirties, especially if he has not won a cup yet, he's going to go for dirt cheap. He's going to take a low contract to go somewhere and win. I think. What What is, in your opinion, a max contract in his case? Fifteen million. Fifteen million. With the cap going up, otherwise thirteen. He's the best player in the NHL. It's not close. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's two people I would rate in his category. But they're still not close. That's McKinnon and Kucherov. And I still think it's not close. And then there's a little bit of a gap. And then you have Dreisaitl, Pasternak, Matthews, like those guys. Um, but he's special. He's he's an all-time great player already. Yep. And the conversation for greatest of all time, yeah. I mean, I don't know if you can ever argue him being better than Lemieux or Gretzky. But that's definitely a conversation that we we can only have when he when he's yeah. done. And and I yeah. think you have to evolve that conversation into like this. The basketball argument is that there's now considered eight goats, eight players that are the greatest of all time in what they did and how they did it and from their eras and whatnot. And I think the hockey argument will evolve eventually to be like a group of greatest of all times, right? Rather than just pointing at one guy and saying he's the best. <laughs> Uh, because we've done that for so long and now we're seeing it right like Ovechkin is going to break the goals record most likely right Mm -hmm. Crosby is a talent in his own class for his entire career and he this year he had an excellent year and he's like what 37 years old uh so many injuries that's what I mean right he's he's someone that I I I looked bad to say i look down upon because when this new generation of players came in i immediately gravitated to ovechkin's style of play and he became my new modern favorite player um yeah but we if you recall um early on like uh crosby was a bit of a whiny yeah and and, Um, but i think he evolved into a guy that he evolved into a guy that plays through injuries and it leads his team he wins face-offs he's on an important moment and he gets the job done He's reliable. Yeah. He's the kind of guy at 40 years old, you have him on Team Canada because he's that important. Do you know what I mean? Yep. That yeah. that he's he's in that upper class of of players of all time. And I think there's a couple other guys you can argue for, like Bobby Orr and you know, maybe there's even Mike group. Bossy. There, there's a group, right? And there's it's like, but we're we're very like one note right now in hockey, how we look at things, and I think we need to broaden the horizons of like how we judge things. Um, that being said, I, I'm really looking forward to the series. I think it's going to be excellent. Is there a start date? Like, I don't, uh, yeah, they released it. I'm pretty sure. Um, let me check. <clears throat> uh, so anyways, uh, what did you think about Florida Rangers? I know you didn't really watch all of it. It was a battle of the goalies. Um, and it was, it was there were, it was pretty much back and forth. Um, hard fought, uh, physical. It was a very entertaining series. Uh, but in the end, I thought the better team won. Uh, I'll just keep it very simple. Um, No, that's good. That's good. Uh, By the way, it's Saturday. First game is Saturday, June 8th. Oh, okay. Gives them a chance to rest up a little bit. Yeah. Cause game seven was no game. Game six would have been Tuesday. Wait, today was game six. Game seven would have been Tuesday. Yeah. Yeah. Today, game um, six would have been Tuesday. Seven, seven, six, six, seven. So, you know, like a week off, um, that's that's going to benefit both teams. Uh, you know, uh, those... especially Florida. Florida, like, yep. those guys are, are a little bit injured. I don't know how Edmonton is, to be honest with you. As much as I've watched of the series, I, I didn't really focus in on stuff like that where you could see, like, the Florida guys were going at a thousand percent. Like my legs broken, that's fine. I'm still going to play the rest of the series. Yeah, yeah. I I, I don't think uh, there's really anybody on Edmonton that's going through any serious issues. Uh, but you know, if they're sore, they're 
pretty much going to be good to go by by Saturday. So that that's going to benefit them as well. Um, you know, rumors out there that McDavid's not one hundred percent. I, you know, based on the way he's playing, I don't. Oh, his don't, pass I don't tonight to set true. up Hyman's goal was was nice. Yeah, I don't. Know. But um, uh, it, it should be a good series. Should be a good series. I hope it goes long. Um, you know, when you look at it on paper, Florida should uh, dominate. But I, th- I would like to get six games. You know, for my own entertainment's sake, I, I think that would be nice. And I really hope they they played offset with NBA. I hope it goes one game, one game, one game, one game, so that I'm not miss having nights without a sport to watch. Uh, it's funny because that'd be cool. You don't really think about it in the off season. You're like, oh, I want sports. Then the season comes around, and you're like, oh, I'll watch this game when I can. I'll watch this game when I can. And then playoffs hit, and it's like for both sports you just like i just want to watch like i'm so into it like i'm watching like three games at one time like just trying to follow everything that's happening oh. uh, the playoffs are, are something different man i don't want to get off too uh off too much off topic but uh i think uh, ba- basketball is like starting in a week as well right like it, basketball is wednesday i think is I it show. wednesday they took a bit of a break as well yeah there it was a, a, about a week uh hold on i'll tell you right now because i already have it open uh thursday thursday coming up wow which means okay. oh they play thursday sunday so i think they the plan is to offset them for viewership so that's good see there you go uh, you got your wish yeah i hope so uh nothing on that friday, should be an interesting one too man the one day i'm off on friday and there's no games you know I guess <laughs> I'll watch baseball um do you have anything leafs that you would like to talk about Not really. Okay, I have a question that someone asked me, and I and and to talk about here. So I figured, you know, I'll just throw it out there. I know you're not ready, so that's why I'm going to do it. <laughs> uh it was the plan that in their head, the move that they should make involves Marner. Marner is the p the main piece. Okay. Mm-hmm. If you're making the trade with Marner, do you look for a goalie? Is your the main take back a goalie, a defenseman, or a replacement for Marner? Uh, goalie and a defenseman. But like, what would be your like? You're not going to get two stars for Marner. Is it a star goalie and a defenseman, or a star defenseman and a goalie? And and, and you know what? It's so funny how you brought that up. Um, because a lot of people out there think that the return is not going to be much. That's pretty much like the consensus that I've seen amongst a lot of reports. And uh, I guess the question that's being asked is, is it, is it pointless or, you know, is it even worth it to, to trade them? Um, so, you know, I don't know if you saw that little picture that came out in social media of uh Marner meeting with, uh, Craig Brube at some coffee shop. Um, was it real? I haven't seen that. It, it was real. Um, I mean, you know, what does that tell you? I don't know. It doesn't. Uh, that that's his know. first target on the list of people he wants to talk to to judge their character, probably. Yeah, probably. Because I think like the question that's being asked is uh, how will Marner handle Craig Berube's uh, coaching style? Um, is it worth it for for Marner to go through that? And if it's not, then it's like but we I, we sorry, did see ahead. we did see Marner thrive under Babcock. Surprisingly, that's where he was at his best. Yeah, I, I I've seen that uh, because he was blocking shots and he wasn't really yeah. doing that, that much much of that with. Uh, with uh, Sheldon Keefe. Um, I don't know. It, 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 like, it, it's, a, it's a difficult thing to answer. Um, I do definitely think that they should uh, go after, uh, you know, a, a defenseman um, if they're going to trade Marner. Um, I think goalies are a little easier to, um, to attain. 
um, rather than a big bruising defenseman, which is what they need. Um, yeah, well, I, I, I'm curious to hear what you think about that. I actually watched a video recently uh, talking about trades. Um, I can't remember what channel it was. Uh, it was called it like deal or no deal. He presented a bunch of trades that people taught people looked up and like did the research for and posted. And he said, would you take the deal? Would you not? And there was a very interesting one that was Marner and wall to Nashville for Soros, um, a young winger they have and a first round pick and a, like a fourth round pick or something like that. And he's like, I don't know if maybe the draft picks are overkill. Maybe you take like, a third and a fourth or a fourth and a fifth something. But he like, uh, to me, that's like the trade I want. I want, I would love a legit starting goalie and to get a piece back. And I think for Nashville, Marner fits in with their system and, and wall is shown. He could be good enough that it might be worth taking a chance on it for Nashville. Uh, but specifically I would target a goalie. I would target a goalie and with a secondary of a defenseman, like how you said it. I think that's ideally what I would want. And then if anything, you move like Lilgren or something because he still has value. Lilgren is a uh, restricted free agent, I believe, right? Yeah, so you can yeah, sign yeah. and trade him should uh, should you so, have to. Um, I think they have like about 18 to $20 million of cap space and they have a lot of players to sign. And it's going to be very difficult this year. They're going to have to rely on, you know, their up and comers like Fraser and Minton to take up those those depth spots so that they don't have to sign free agents worth about four or five million dollars. So you know they're going to have to depend on these contracts. You have uh, to convince be... a lot of players to bet on themselves yeah. and take low contracts to prove that they're worth big money next when the contract expires right and and but like i said the reason i target marner in this situation and that i i thought that per, that uh, the person that asked me that question made sense is because it's the one contract you have that is expiring that you could take off your books that doesn't hurt your team that badly with the way nylander has been playing in the last two seasons he's not the one i want to get rid of and Matthews is your best player on your team. So you're not going to get rid of Matthews. Tavares' contract is about to turn into like a $2 million contract. I'm exaggerating, but it is, right? So Marner is going to cost you $12 million. But it's so funny how people talk about Marner not being able to excel under Craig Berube. Like we need to speak realistically here. I don't really think that Nylander is going to really enjoy playing under Craig. I, I, I think I agree with you. I think he's going to be the one that's going to suffer the most from this. I think Matthews is indifferent to whether coaches are tough or not. Um, <clears throat> I think Marner needs a tough coach. Uh, you know, I, I do think so too. Um, but I'm telling you right now, man, Bruby is going to like absolutely destroy Nylander if he's going to, play the way he plays at times last year. And I'm not talking about offensively. I'm talking about defensively. Oh yeah, of course. Come on. <laughs> you know what I mean? He's he's gonna get benched. <laughs> I think I think there needs to be a conversation had with Tavares as well about what he needs to do as the leader of the team. Not so much his on ice, but like as the leader of the team, what he needs to do. Cause are you talking about being like out more outspoken? Yeah. Or that, are you that, talking that, about uh, playing a more of a depth role because in my eyes he needs to play oh, a bit of both. third line center. A, a bit of both. He yeah. needs to he needs to be there for his team and accept his his role, and he also needs to push them. They need to know that the captain is the captain, right? Their their job is to to carry the morale of the players and like get them ready to like let's go. Right? The yeah. coach is the boss. Think of it as like a work thing. There's like a manager and then there's like the supervisor in charge of the employees. The manager's there to like, this is what we're going to do, but it has to be carried out by somebody. And I feel like there's not, there's Tavares is not keeping accountability for what his guys are doing. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> there was another topic of conversation about uh, taking the C off of Tavares. I, I don't think that's. Uh... I don't think there's anyone worth giving it to. Yeah, I I don't think that's an option. I don't think that's the right way to go right no. now. It's you don't. Not. I don't think you do that either because it, it's a bad look. 
It is a bad look. If you don't want him to be captain, you know what you do when his contract expires? Don't re-sign him. There's no point in taking the C off him for one season. What would be the point of that? That would just be ridiculous. Yeah. <clears throat> it's like it's going to be a tough year for them. Um, you know, I don't think that they're going to um, uh, be better. Uh, I think it's going to be uh, very difficult for them for this team uh, to take a step forward because of the cap space that they have. Um, I think uh, they need to look towards two years from now when they have a little more flexibility and then they can actually make some of the signings that they want to make. Um, Does the cap so, go up? Did the cap go up? It went up $4 million. It's going to go up $4 million next year. But we got to remember it's going to be taken up by Marner, uh, by Matthews and Nylander's raise. New contracts. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's going to be interesting to see what they do. I would love to see Domi and, and Bertuzzi come back. I know they're going to look for more money and more term. Um, I don't think it's doable. Um, if, um, I think they'll probably just sign one of them. Um, I don't know what you think of that. Uh, I, I agree. It's it's, it's going to be tough. It's going to be tough. There's not much you could do, like you said. We got to put this played out. I think I'll call it right now, and we'll see how it goes. I think the first half of the season, up till like a little bit after thanks American Thanksgiving, is the Leafs are going to be struggling. They might have a hot first couple games, but they're going to struggle. And then towards the around Christmas time, they're going to really click and it's all going to pick up going into the playoffs under the new regime of everything. Uh, but I think the early part is going to be really rough. Like I, out of I, the playoffs. Um, yeah, but I, it'll be interesting to see. Cool. Right. Yeah. I don't have anything else. Do you have anything else? No, man. I'm good. All right. Thank you for watching. Let us know what you think in the comments. Tell us if you know, if you have a trade you want to talk about that you think should happen. Uh, peace out.